probably one of the greatest advice um, uh, advice nuggets I ever got from someone um, was probably a decade ago, and, and it was concerning the gospel invitation. And it's and he said this. He goes, Shane, make sure you're prepping and planning your gospel invitation just like you do prepping and planning your sermon. I think, and and that was, it seems so simple, but that was revolutionary to me because if you think about it, a lot of times, man, we'll pour over the text prepping for that sermon. We'll spend hours and we don't even think of the gospel invitation until we get up there. Family, multiplication, restoration. I'm Dahadi Lewis. Join me, Noah Odom and Hayden Radden, as we come to you from Atlanta, St. Louis, and Las Vegas, as we seek to add value to your church planning journey. We'll have real-time, authentic conversations that are relevant to the life of the church planner and pastor. Join us as we hear from leaders of this movement from across North America and discover what it really takes to plant churches everywhere for everyone. The world tells us our differences should divide us. But the gospel, it has a different story. Our mission, our calling, His command, is a mission that unites every Christ follower in a way that stands out, a way that doesn't make sense to the world. Join us June 13th and 14th at SEND Conference to be refreshed and celebrate the church together on mission. A free event hosted by the International Mission Board and North American Mission Board of the Southern Baptist Convention. Learn more at SendConference.com. And welcome, everybody, to another episode of the We Are Send Network podcast. My name is Noah Oldham, the lead pastor of August Gate in St. Louis, joined, as always, by Hayden Ratner, the senior pastor of Walk Church in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hayden, brother, good to see you, man. Man, it's so good to see you. Praise the Lord. Grateful to be back on the We Are Send Network podcast and with a special guest today. Oh, yes. The man. He's going to bring us into some evangelism. Yes. Grateful to have Pastor Shane on the line. Man, I tell you hey, what. what's up, guys? Shane, your, your title, I feel like I want to give this the, the most epic introduction possible, but Come the on. National Next Gen Director for the North American Mission Board, Shane Pruitt. Man, welcome to the podcast. Hey, so Noah. Hi. Man, thanks for having me on. First of all, Man, you guys are some of my favorites. Y'all are the best of the best. So really, man, I feel like I'm like a seventh grade B teamer getting to hang out with two varsity guys today. You know, I only use that reference because you guys, I mean, like Noah's, you know, just yoked up. Hayden was like, what was your, what was your like Mr. Galaxy basketball player, the greatest of all time? Like, you know, second only Jordan. What was that? We got to get you some. (laughs) We gotta, get you, we gotta get you some Gatorade, man. No Galaxy, bro. Gatorade, man. Come on. <laughs> oh man, that's fantastic. Back in the day, back in yeah. the day when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. <laughs> mm, mm, amen to that's that. Good. Well, hey guys, Dahadi is on the road this week. Uh, he's been out of the country. He's been uh, all over the country getting some stuff done. So we have the awesome opportunity uh, to bring Shane on today. And Shane, we're going to have a two-part conversation these next two episodes. In this first one, I really want us to dive into the importance of evangelism. Evangelism is so necessary to uh, the work of the local church and church planting uh, but we have just walked through a year of pandemic. So, man, I would love for you to speak to just the importance of evangelism in this in this season ahead post-pandemic. Yeah, no, gosh, if you think about it, I mean, it sounds um, a little cliche, but it's true. It's like now is the time for evangelism. You know, I, I can't help, Good. you know, over 2020, 2021, I can't help but think of Proverbs 27.1. Uh, where it says, do not boast about tomorrow for you do not know what a day may bring. I think one thing that 2020 Mm. taught us is that the world literally can change in a day. And so I think what 2020 Mm, and 2021 has done is it's helped people fall out of love with the world. So now they're looking for hope. They're looking for joy. They're looking for life. They're looking for peace. And so we have the answer to that, right? You know, when you say, okay, there's a hopeless world out there that now knows they're hopeless. There's a joyless world that now knows they're joyless and a world full of death. And people are very aware of that. And the scary thing you see on, you know, the TV of just the the numbers of uh, COVID-19 deaths just growing every day, not to mention all the other things that are going on. And then, man, you talk about conflict. You're like, well, everybody gets along. Get on Twitter. You'll see not everybody gets along, right? And so there's a world full of conflict. And here's what we know. A hopeless world needs hope. 
A joyless world needs joy. A world full of death needs life. A world full of conflict needs peace. Hope has a name. Joy has a name. Life has a name. Peace has a name. And that name is Jesus. And so we get to share that hope with the world. And God's plan A Mm. of sharing that hope with the world is the church. Mm. And there's no backup plan. And so, yes, 2020 has been extremely hard. 2021 has been extremely hard. It's an incredible opportunity for the gospel. It's an incredible opportunity for the church to be the church. And if you think about it, you know, an ever changing world is desperate for never changing truths. You know, and so if you think about it over this last year, Mm. people go, man, everything has changed. Nothing is the same. The world has changed. And yes, a lot of things have changed, but not everything. Jesus Christ has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's never a moment where Jesus does the face palm and go, ah, I didn't see that one coming. Never once, right? He sits on his throne as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The second thing that hasn't changed is our identity in Christ. If we've been bought by the blood of Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit of God inside of us. We are the church. And 2020, 2021 did not change that. If anything, it should just fortify our faith um, that even when the world changes, uh, the one who created the world doesn't. And then the third thing that hasn't changed is the calling of God on our life. We're still called to the great commandment and the great commission. And COVID-19 did not push pause on the great commission. It's given an incredible opportunity for the mm-hmm. great commission. Dude, man, that's that'll fantastic. preach right there, man. <laughs> yeah. Great. Hey, word. Hayden, Hayden uh, we, we recently just got past man. Easter. Easter happened all over North America, churches yeah. planted, all kinds of people who are uh, not used to being church come to church on Easter. They hear the gospel. Hey, what what have you been seeing online? Because I know church planting and the traditional church are often very, very different in their cultures. What have you seen when it comes to response time and calling people to believe the gospel? I'd love to hear from your perspective as a church planter, Hayden, and I want Shane to speak into that as well. Yeah, you know, it's a unique time for sure, but I think that it's also a time where I I feel like people's hunger level is up and people's openness is sparked because we have just came from a year of being at home. Uh, People are just kind of twiddling their thumbs. They're restless. They struggle with one another. And so I think that there's just been even a renewed energy in the house Mm. as far as in the church on Sundays where we're saying, hey, look, people are open to an invite. You may not believe it, but try it. And so the power of an invite is language we've been using a lot lately, especially leading up to Easter, little mini challenges, like who can bring the most people and not just church people, but lost people, people far from God. I think that stirs an evangelistic culture when you continue to talk uh, with your people about reaching new people and the beauty of that. I, I found that the joy that sparks in a person when they bring somebody far from God to church and when that person makes a decision to receive Christ, it just lights something up in the person. And so I know for us, yeah. that's one thing that we've been wanting to fan in, in the lives of, of current disciples in our church already. When it comes to altar calls, I feel like it looks a little bit different, but the opportunity is is is, is still prime. You know, we're instead of calling people up front to pray for people, how we had traditionally done that in the past five years um, before pandemic started, we're just doing hand raises. One thing I've been saying is if you want to receive Jesus today, I want to lead you in a prayer. And it's not the words of the prayer that save you. It's the faith in the gospel that you have uh, that saves you. But I want you to put your hand up and I want you to know that God's going to come and give you a high five when you put your hand up for receiving him as the Lord and Savior of your life. So little things like that, just trying to help people sense that the Lord isn't, you know, so distant, but he's he's near, he's here. And we have that opportunity mm-hmm. to respond. And so we're trying to push online connection cards and QR codes and make it as simple as possible apps. I think we need to, as as the church of today, we need to be uh, working hard to meet people right where they're at and create easy on roads and ramps for people to respond. And so that's just some of the things that we're walking through in in our context here in Las Vegas, but we're seeing some fruit from it. Uh, Mm -hmm. We're we're hopeful to see even more. What are things going like in in your world in the Mm loop, bro? Yeah, dude, I I think the same thing. I think that 
the, the post-pandemic world has given us an opportunity where people are, they're hungry. Uh, as you've, we've said on the podcast before, my church has grown right. uh, double during the pandemic because people are looking wow. for a church that's open, yeah. and then they're looking for yeah. a church that's passionate. And we've had restrictions, we've had social distancing, we've done all the things we can to keep people safe, but people are hungry. And we just, uh, at, at Easter time, we had 12 people baptized. Like 12 people that that over the course of the last year have made a profession so of faith. Yeah, and it's, it's awesome, been yeah. it's been beautiful to see. Um, but that's what's been interesting is the 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 pandemic, I think, has um it may have pushed some things that were already kind of out the door. And that's kind of the question I have for you, Shane. Uh just to put it really simply, is I think COVID has killed a number of things, or at least sidelined sideline them for a while. Has COVID killed the altar call? Is that going to be different moving forward? What do you think? What does that look like uh, in the evangelism world? What does that look like in the church world that's resp- seeing people respond to the gospel in large numbers? Yeah, that's a great question. And first of all, I just want to affirm what you two brothers are saying, man. I'm over here just amening you guys and nodding my head. Is is um, uh, People are hungry. And what I've seen, you know, too, um, as I've been traveling around and speaking and in and, and different churches and conferences and events uh, every week is that um, here's what I've been seeing is, first of all, uh, at in-person events, the number may be smaller than previous years because of everything going on. Um, mm-hmm. But the people who are there mm-hmm. are there because they want to be there. Because if you think yeah. about it, you have every excuse in the world not to yeah. come to something, right? So if they're there, they're there because they want right. to be there, first of all. And then they're looking for hope mm. and answers. And mm. so I said, you know, like that physical number may be smaller, but the percentage of spiritual responses and decisions is up in comparison to the number that's there because people are there. They're looking for hope and answers. So, yeah, the altar call, you know, if right, this was a topic that was being thrown around years even before the pandemic hit. Is that does altar call still work? Yeah. Is that a thing of the past? Uh, how do we do it with integrity? We don't want to manipulate people. I say it's always dependent upon your context. Now, so let's back up from the word altar call and let's go towards the word gospel invitations. Does gospel invitations work? Yeah. Yes. Nice. And I think gospel invitations always must be given every time the gospel is preached. And my personal conviction is every time you preach, the gospel should be preached. And so that's my conviction, right? Yeah. So Good. even if you're preaching on generosity, make a beeline to the cross because the most generous act ever was a God who sent his son on our behalf and a son who hung on the cross in our place. That's, that's right. an extreme Amen. generosity. And so I always feel like every sermon should have the gospel. And let me clarify what I mean by that. When I say gospel, I mean God, sin, cross, resurrection, redemption through repentance and faith. And when that's shared, I think an invitation must always be given. Call people to respond to that. Yeah. And I think yeah. the gospel should be every, every message because in that message, you're calling Great. the lost to be found. Mm-hmm. And then you're mobilizing the found who already know Jesus to go live in response to that, right? Because that's what it means to live on mission is that you want to know Jesus and make Jesus known in every context that you're in. So the gospel should be a part of every message. And if mm. the gospel is a part of every message an invitation to respond to the gospel should be a part of every message response for the lost to know Jesus and a response for the found to go make Jesus known. Now, altar call. Does that mean come Man. forward to the altar? You know, we used to say, well, it's just a stage with carpet. Well, you know, when it's covered with the tears and the prayers right. of the saints, I think it does become an altar unto the Lord. So it, I think it's dependent on context. Does it still work? Uh, I'll just make it, you know, uh, extremely relevant to at the time of this recording, uh, the previous Friday, uh, I preached a Good Friday service at a church called Johnson Ferry, and we saw 87 uh, people respond to the gospel. 86 of them mm. were teenagers. One was a 87. grandma. Yeah. And one was a grandma wow. that was there with her wow. granddaughter. Both of them gave their life to Jesus. And it was a come forward, Praise you know, God. um, but I also mm. love, uh, and have done what Hayden talked about. Hey, I mean, if you just confess with me, um, if you just believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, like Romans 10, nine says, Hey, raise your hand. We want to celebrate with you. And then I've seen, it, it's been really helpful to People raise their hand, and then those ushers go put a card in that person's hand so they can fill out that card. It may mm. be, hey, respond 
by texting them this number. Uh, You know, I did or Mm -hmm. saved or Jesus, whatever Mm -hmm. your word is that you use, text into this number and it gives you an opportunity to to follow up. Uh, I think next step stables still work really work. You know, a lot of people use next step stables. Go, Hey, afterward, our staff is going to be at some tables right outside this room. If you want to hear more uh, about this Jesus we just talked about, or if you gave your life to Jesus, go meet us. We got a gift for you. We want to talk to you. We want to get to know you more. Those next steps tables. Uh, Also our church, um, which is our home church. My wife's on staff there is Lake Point Church. Um, And we have a room that says uh, right afterward, if you pray to receive Christ or you got more answers or you want to have this ongoing dialogue, go to this room. There's pastors in there. They want to meet you. You get to meet them and you can have those talks. And and every week people give their life to Jesus in that room because they're able to sit down and have those talks. So is it a come forward? Is it a go back? Is it a put your hand up? Is it a fill out a card? Is it a text? Whatever. I think you have to figure out that out for your own context, but do something. People go, what works? Whatever shares the Mm. gospel and whatever you'll use Mm -hmm. and people respond to, that's what works. Yeah. 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 Yeah, The answer is yes. Is it, is it come (laughs) forward? Is it hand up? Is it prayer next steps room? All that. Yep. It's yes. And I, I think that that's, there's theology behind that yes, right? This is what Paul's talking about in 1 Corinthians 9. He's saying, hey, look, by whatever means, to the Greek I became Greek, to the weak I became weak, right? To the strong I became strong. I tried to do whatever I could that I may win some, right? And so that was the mentality of Paul. I like the the, the Paul mentality, whatever it takes. You know, I'll just go ahead and say this. This might be a little controversial. But our church Uh-oh. did an Easter festival on Saturday. We did an Easter egg hunt. We we did that, yeah, right? And I know that for some Christians, <laughs> they were like, it's about the cross. It's about the gospel. And, and friend, <laughs> every moment I touched that mic, before I called that next egg hunt for the three-year-olds and they all lined up, I said, let me just remind everybody, this is a blessing. We're glad to be here. But the reason why we're here is because God gave first. He gave us his son, Jesus, and, yeah. and he rose from the grave. Yeah. And we're celebrating that today. So mm-hmm. ready, three, two, one, go. Yeah. Right. And so these are little opportunities <laughs> to just even weave the gospel into stuff oh, that man. our culture is celebrating. And we're putting an invite card in yeah. each person's hand. We know if they come to the house on Sunday, it's going to be an unapologetic Christian service that's full of gospel singing, gospel yeah. preaching. We try to skit this year that dramatize the gospel. And uh, and why? So I mean, we may win some people. And so, yeah, I believe that mm, the yeah. motivation is evangelism. The yeah. the, the emphasis yeah. is e- evangelistic. Um, and so, you know, I would even just add one more piece, Noah, that's, that's been helpful for our church in this season. And, and I feel like we hadn't done as good of a job over the previous years as we've done this past year. And that's just praying evangelistic prayers where every Tuesday yeah, our man. staff gathers for a prayer meeting. So we have about 11 staff members. We, all, we have a church planning apprentice too, who's on our team. And we take mm-hmm. the first 45 minutes of our call to pray evangelistic prayers. Now we pray for sick people. We pray for different needs as well, but we're identifying people that are not yet saved. And we're saying, God, we're putting these people on your radar. God, we want to see them saved. We want to see, God, if there's just one, if there's 10, if there's 20, we're interceding on their behalf, praying for an open door, bless the invite. And and we've actually Mm. seen God respond. We've seen some of those same people that we prayed for send a text over right after the prayer meeting say, hey, can somebody call me? (laughs) Right. Things like that by faith. Wow. Where, you know, we believe that I think John Wesley said, who was a ferocious evangelist, right? John Wesley said that prayer is where the action is. And so we could probably do more evangelistic work in five minutes with God <laughs> than we can do in a lot yeah. of effort on our own. So that's some of the stuff that I'm, re- I'm wrestling with Absolutely. right now. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hi, and I love that, that intentionality with the prayer, you know, um, so good. And to preach expecting God to save people, that if there's lost mm-hmm. people there and we preach Jesus, that we trust him to draw people unto himself. Um, and here's a, a probably one of the greatest advice um, uh, advice nuggets I ever got 
from someone um, was probably a decade ago, and, and it was concerning the gospel invitation. And it's and he said this. He goes, Shane, make sure you're prepping and planning your gospel invitation just like you do prepping and planning your sermon. I think, and and that was, it seems so simple, but that was revolutionary to me because if you think about it, a lot of times, man, we'll pour over the text prepping for that sermon. We'll spend hours and we don't even think of the gospel invitation until we get up there. And I think that's why a lot of times we'll see some of our faithful brothers, they'll preach a text, man, they'll preach a bold message, a Christ-centered message. But then when it gets to that gospel invitation time, you'll almost see their faces go flush. They'll lose all their confidence. And that's because they didn't prep and plan their invitation like they did their sermon. So I want to say every week, just like you plan Mm. and prep your sermon, plan and prep your your invitation, what you're going to say, what you're asking people to do, um, man, the, the verses you're going to use in that time. Um, you know, uh, several years ago, I was walking out of a small airport and we had to walk out onto a tarmac to get on a mm-hmm. plane and there was a sign and I'll never forget this. I actually took a picture of it and the sign said, moving propellers rip heads off. And I'll never forget that. And that was a oh my very gosh. clear sign. And so when you see that sign, you're looking up, Man. right? Like, like that was clear. And so I would say on our gospel invitations, whatever you decide to do, come forward, hand up, right. pray this prayer, fill out this card, text this, go to next steps, go to that room, be clear. Nothing will hinder people mm-hmm. moving more than confusion. So be clear what you're wow. saying. Be clear what you're asking them to do. And the only way to be clear is to prep and plan for it ahead of time. Yeah. Man, that is wow. phenomenal. Wow. I am so glad we're going to have a part two of this conversation because there is so much more for us to talk about. But here's what I I heard you guys say. I want to encourage our planters. I want to encourage our planters before we sign off with with what I just heard you guys collectively say. Uh, And I think it's something we understand at the beginning of church planting. We may lose as we get into it. it. We have a guy named Richard Pope that's in our network that just launched on Easter. And he had 87 people at launch. He saw 17 people respond, 14 fill out the card to follow Jesus. And and he was talking with me about this in text message recently. And I think he would say the same thing. So here's what you guys said. Plan for the gospel. Prepare for the gospel. Pray for the gospel. Preach the gospel. And then expect for the gospel to be powerful. I think I think we just wrote a book too. There's the chapters right there for That sounds like an article right there. Man, oh, I think man. that sounds like an article right there. <laughs> oh man. Well, thank you everyone for joining us for this episode of the We Are Send Network podcast. As always, we invite you to share this, to subscribe, to join us for more episodes. Um, if you want to know more information about church planting with the North American Mission Board and Send Network, you can go to sendnetwork.com or you can text the words send network to 888 888- one, two, three. Again, that number is 888-123. And until next time, we are Send Network. You have been listening to We Are Send Network, a resource of the North American Mission Board. For more information about today's podcast and other relevant resources, visit sendnetwork.com.